One of my favorite guitarists, Grant Green, was a master at taking Charlie Parker's language and distilling it down to its very core. By doing this, he was able to take only a couple pieces of jazz language and essentially use them in hundreds of different ways. In this lesson, I'm going to show you that process, which honestly is the process that is used by most jazz musicians to internalize and personalize jazz language. Okay, enough talking. Let's learn a secret to mastering jazz language. So the first thing that you need for this process is, of course, some jazz language. So I'm going to now show you five essential Grant Green licks that we are going to use extensively in this lesson. I would highly recommend that you practice these a bit and get them under your fingers before moving on to the rest of this lesson. So our first Grant Green lick comes from his solo on the things we did last summer and sounds like this. Our second line comes from his solo on All the Things You Are, and sounds like this. Our third Grant Green lick comes from his solo on You Stepped Out of a Dream, and sounds like this. Our fourth lick is short, but really useful, and comes from his solo on Cool Blues, which sounds like this. Our last line focuses on some great minor language and comes from his solo on Grant Stand. That one sounds like this. So now we have these five essential Grant Green licks under our fingers and in our ears. The next step to mastering jazz language is to be able to mix and match these pieces together in order to create new lines such as this one. So how do we do that? The first step to understanding this is to understand jazz's most played chord progression, the 2-5-1. So within this progression is essentially three different parts which could have similar or different language played over them. First we have the 2 chord which could use minor language such as these examples from our Grant Green licks. Next, we have the five chord, which could have dominant language played over it. And then sometimes after that, we have material that resolves our line from the five chord going to the one chord. I like to call these phrases line closers. Then finally, we have the one chord, which usually ends our line or puts a tag on it. So knowing this, we can now look at our five essential Grant Green licks and label the various elements of what makes these licks sound the way they do. And then once we know that, we can re-piece them back together and create new lines. I have an in-depth analysis, which can help you a lot in this lesson, uh, available for download on my Patreon page, which you can find linked in the comment section and the video description below. So now that we understand the various parts of a 2-5-1, let's talk about the process of piecing these lines together. So the first thing I need to understand is that both minor language and dominant language can be played both over the two and the five chord. So for example, let's take this piece of Grant Green's line from lick three. This is just minor language, but as I stated before, this could be played over both the two or the five chord. So we could have this, right? So this line ends on the note E, which is the third of our one chord if we resolve C major seven. Remember that the one chord of a two five one usually ends or puts a tag on our line. So knowing that we can look through all the Grant Green licks and find how he ends his lines. The phrase from lick two works amazingly well here and it also starts on the note E. Our 
All right, now let's add some line closers to the mix. So to begin, let's find some minor language to start our line with. Let's use the beginning of lick five for this. Now let's add in a line closer. Basically, line closers are usually short phrases that most likely start on a chord tone of our five chord that leads us back to our one chord. There's a great line closer from lick two, which starts on beat three that works really well here. And then finally, we could end our line with a tag like we did before, since this line ends on the note E. Here is one more example of starting out with minor language and then adding a line closer using Grant's licks. We can also extend the use of our minor language using a Barry Harris trick. So if we have minor language over the two chord, what we can do is move that exact language up a minor third and play that over our five chord and it's gonna work. Let's take our minor language from lick three and try it out. Or we could do the same idea with lick five. So, so far we have built lines that begin with minor language, but what about lines that begin with dominant language? Remember that dominant and minor language can be used both over the two and the five chords. So for example, let's use lick four, which is dominant language. We could play it over a short two five with a tag ending, or we could connect this dominant language with other dominant language, the start of lick one combined with lick four. Notice how I connect these lines together with a common tone. Lick four starts on B, which is the third of our dominant chord, G7. So whenever our lines end or hit the note B, we can insert lick four here, thus using common tones to connect them together. All right, so lastly, I wanna talk about ways to connect minor and dominant language together. Because minor language and dominant language can be used both over the two and the five chords, we can connect these ideas and lines together over these chords. So for example, let's take the start of lick five and connect it with lick four. Again, I did this by using B as a common tone between these lines. On a side note, we could also use this really long line uh, over static dominant chords. Uh, for instance, we could use it over the first four bars of a blues, or we can also use this same line over a really long static minor chord, such as on the song, So What? We could of course take this line and add a line closer to it to make it have some finality. Let's take the line closer from lick one. So have you noticed how many lines we just created using only five Grant Green licks? So this is the process that people use to internalize and personalize jazz vocabulary to take some small amounts of language and turn it into a large amount of material. The more that you practice doing this out of time, such as we did in this lesson, the easier it will be to take material and improvise with it this way in time. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to end this lesson and play over the first A section of the great tune, There Will Never Be Another You, and only use these five Grant Green licks and combine them together in ways that we worked on in this lesson. If you want a PDF of all the examples that we used in this lesson and the etude for what I'm about to play, make sure to check out my Patreon, which you can find linked below. The reason I 
I focused on Grant Green's lines in this lesson are because they're so clear and easy to use. If you want me to cover other people's language and do the same process, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you made it this far in the video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and lets me know that you guys want to see more content like this. Also, I want to say welcome if you're a new subscriber to this channel. Uh, my last video did really well, at least for my channel, and I got a lot of new people interested. So I just want to thank you guys and also thank the people that have been here for a long time. I really appreciate your guys' support. All right. Thank you guys so much. And remember to always keep swinging.